Hello my soccer universe and welcome to a post Coppa Italia Serie A review, the first one for 2024 and yes, this sounded a little bit weird, but we'll talk both about the Serie A action from the past weekend and also what happened in uh, the Coppa Italia a little bit. I made uh, some short videos on the action as well, but here in a little bit more detail and I probably will keep uh, as long as the Coppa Italia is going on and I think the next round is next week already we'll keep it at midweek and then we go to the regular uh, Tuesday scheduling for Serie A I would say. Um, in the league it's getting tight again Inter dropped points for the first time in who knows uh, when but it's now only two points with them and Juve a Juve team that is actually trying to f is feeling itself getting some confidence out there and I, I don't know I think they're starting to believe their own hype and I also feel that Inter you know but Inter is never far away and Inter is also trying to I think their focus is too much on Juve already when you hear interviews coming or when you hear interviews I mean I don't hear them because you know I don't speak Italian but when I listen to uh, Serie A commentary in English. It's very often that interviews from Inter are focusing already on Juve, so they're feeling the pressure. And yeah, if you're Juve, that's exactly what you want. Juve is still saying, We're only here for top four, we want to go into the Champions League, but I'm sure they wouldn't mind snatching up a title or two. And then good position for both titles, especially if you look at the relatively soft Coppa Italia draw for Juve as compared to maybe the other contenders out there because I think all the other three uh, quarterfinals I will see those are local derbies this is a, uh, some relatively interesting fixtures there yes the Italian Cup is not a great competition the way it is set up but once you get to the quarterfinal stage and so on there might be the, on special semifinals there are usually some really good and interesting matchups where the teams also go all in so yeah that's the situation on top of the league uh important for me milan fan is of course also milan cc situation uh they started the year well i mean they ruined christmas <laughs> with the two to the right salutata but since then a rumble and stumble uh win to close out the old year and in the new year i actually a real fun performance and i did make a, um, a short video on that uh, in the cup over Cagliari that actually has me over quite excited and maybe it's not so bleak uh, as one would have expected. However, probably the biggest story and a little bit underreported, I want to get this in before we talk about the games is that uh, with the 1st of January the growth decree of uh, was expiring. It was a law that allowed um, high value uh, executives uh, from abroad or also uh, Italians living abroad to come to Italy with a major tax break I think 50% 50 tax cut and, and so on which of course uh, the executives like uh, your Lukaku's and, and, and so on from the soccer teams they used it big time and that actually made uh, Serie A for a while quite competitive on the transfer market because they could afford higher value players right now however with this expiring this january window many 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 teams have already said oh, this will affect us big time and it might mean that we don't see big transfers coming in from Ser uh, into Serie A anymore uh, which on one side is a shame but on the other side I mean you is already kind of pointing a little bit away what Milan was showing in the cup is also showing, the, showing a little bit the way um, it's actually mean that you will have to rely on youth again and while the Italian national is much maligned, if you look at the youth level, they're actually not performing that badly. So maybe this is just another kink where you could actually um, excel with youth development. And you know, I, I read now that Milan is finally thinking about getting a B team in Serie G. I think those are all good uh, developments that one, one could have. Yes, I think. Uh, at first and it always hurts if a league loses its uh, power to acquire big name players because it feeds only more into the Premier League but you know uh, a model at the moment and as much as I hate to say it is the model is develop players that the Premier Leagues want to go gobble up and one of those is of course Raguzin we'll talk about him who got the in equalizer against Inter and already people are talking uh, yeah he might go to the Premier League now at the moment he's very close to Napoli so uh, that's at least something um, but yeah 
I think an Ozeman, although he has a contract extension, uh, will sooner or later end up in the Premier League. Um, and, you know, the money coming in could be reinvested. Now it has to be more Italian youth players. And I'm not Italian, but I have to say, when I see a Milan team with only one, max two Italians in the lineup, it also doesn't feel quite right to me. I mean, this is more a French team at the moment as it is an Italian team. Okay. That was my thoughts on the growth degree and where uh, Sierra is going. Let's quickly talk about uh, the happenings of round 18. So we're not even at the half a point yet in Serie A. Fiorentina also finding a little bit the uh, tough side of, of theirs, uh, keeping clean sheets and getting late winners. This time Luca Ranieri, another young player. Uh, and Fiorentina actually keep their remarkable rise that actually catapults them into a fourth place thanks to the other results also going their way. Where at the same time Napoli, um, they are in real trouble. I mean, they had a really, really bad run. In the last five games, they only won one and lost three. That's not good. And while I was kind of apologetic to Walter Mazzari when he started because he had a real tough run, at the moment, it doesn't look good. And Monza could have won, but they had a penalty that Pessina basically backpassed to the goalie. Really, really bad pen 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 penalty. Yes, I think that Napoli would have deserved a little bit more out of the game than the draw, but you need to get the results. And both coaches got sent off as well. So, fun stuff there. The big game was January against Inter. Uh, Inter, without Lattaro Martinez, yet, they already lost in the cup, and now only a 1-1 one, one at Genoa, a Genoa team that recently also got the draw against Juve, so basically things are leveling out again, and it's also remarkable how uh, closely matched the results for Inter and Juve are. They're dropping the points almost always against the same opponents, or you know, they win against the same, they draw against the same, they lose against the same, so uh, there's really, really not much between them at the moment. Inter get the lead through Arnautovic in the 42nd, however, deep into the uh, first half stoppage time, uh, Dragusin gets the e equalizer after uh, Gudmundsen assist. And I think in the second half, I actually swear that Genoa is a little bit closer to even winning that one. Definitely points drop for Inter. And whenever Inter, whenever your top dog is losing points, everybody else needs to win to keep up the pressure. It is for, true for any league, and this time, Actually, all the contenders, I mean, there's only one contender. I don't count Milan yet. Uh, you see, already Milan is uh, roughly 1% chance of winning the title. Yeah, nine points is steep, but at least you cut the deficit. You know, you win the derby, you might get into it. You're still three games behind. So uh, maybe good news for the league, not good news if you're, of course, an Inter fan. I still maintain if Inter keep a focus on themselves and they don't overextend themselves, yes, they're already out of the cup, so you don't have to deal with that. You're in the Champions League, you can uh, go with confidence into that one as well. Um, that would be a confidence build. And you know, if, if you get loud or back, I still think it's Inter's to lose at this moment, as it's already said in the standings that I'm displaying here. Lazio also started the year with 3 1 over Frosinone, not a gimme. Atalanta also 1 0 only over Lecce. Calvary Empoli, bottom feeder uh, duel, a 0 0 doesn't help either team, too, to be honest. And then the stunner of uh, <laughs> the, the old year, if you like. Udinese 3, Bologna 0. This was a Bologna team that was flying high, had just eliminated Inter from the cup. And then you go to Udine and your defense is just falling apart, especially at the beginning of the second half. Uh, uh, Pereira gave Udine a uh, 1-0 lead, uh, lead at the half. Then Luca and Pajero in the 58th and uh, 52nd uh, make it 3-0. Yes. Mota then tried to, with changes, to really push maybe to get back into the game, but however, it was not meant to be. Let's see, I mean, Bologna is not quite there yet. I still think they could be a top four contender, especially if your Romas and your Napolis continue to fail. Uh, the question is, you're probably there with Fiorentina. So, and if Fiorentina get it go, uh, going through it, Italiano, it might be hard for Bologna. But still, we are close to the half May mark uh, of, the, of the season, so may still be possible. Uh, Milan's 1-0 win over Sassuolo. Yes, they won against Sassuolo, which they barely ever do. So, I don't want to take away from that. We should get a win over Sassuolo. Great. Uh, and yes, there were some good chances in the first half. I think even Giroud scored a goal that was chalked off for offside. So, uh, at stages in the first half, it looked good. 
but then everything in between has looked so disjointed and this was not a good Sasa solo team and you get the winner because Pulisic is not giving up um, was slightly deflected ball yes nice Benazir assist we will miss him at the AFCON as much as I like like the AFCON that 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 will be a big miss to be honest uh, but you get the win and I think Sassuolo was not really threatening the whole game. I think there was one shot that Menio had to uh, tap out. Uh, but it was also not a great game to watch. I think that Milan probably could have scored a second as well. But you know, the most important was to get that win, to get this bad feeling from Salentana, um, from Salentana draw out of you. Uh, speaking of Salantana, get a big win, big, big win uh, at Verona, which might give them just about the shot. I mean, people in Zagi, maybe. Uh, it is relatively tight on the bottom. You have Empoli, you are now uh, two points of safety. Verona is in there. So this was really head to head in the relegation battle. You had Sassolo losing Udine, actually getting up. Kallir 14, Empoli th at 13. So I think there is life in this relegation battle for sure. And then Juve getting a 1-0 win over Roma in the most Juve fashion uh, this season, to be honest. Um, the goal came through Rabio early in the second half. And we have seen this all before, like the win against Na Napoli. Yes, Roma had more possession. They probably even had some chances, but they're so dependent on especially Dybala and Lukaku. And once Juve had shut them down, it was only Juve. And I always felt that Juve were closer to making a second than Roma actually scoring an equalizer. And yes, Jose, you may know more about football than I, but you would deserve to win that one. And sorry to say. Um, if we look over at uh, expected standings, for instance, I mean, yes, it is tight in the, in the table, but Inter still a way much better, better team. So they are still very much the favorites there. Milan Napoli still running out. I mean, it's relatively tight. We are already said um, around the, you know, behind Milan, potentially with Milan. Uh, there's Fiorentina, Bologna, Atalanta, Roma, Napoli, in Lazio. Uh, it's a very, very wide field who might get this fourth spot. Uh, so since Napoli is rated higher and get something together, they still could go in there, but it will be a struggle. On the bottom, as we said, it's very much alive. Um, yes, Salentano have the worst position, but you know, uh, Elas is also not looking good at this very moment. But Kalia and Salentano at the moment would go out and we are already looking at the next round which is happening this week uh, weekend you know 5th to 7th of January um, Inter have a relatively easy one against uh, Ellas we see Juve have to go South Salernitana maybe a nasty away trip yeah the big one is definitely Roma against Atalanta Milan have to play at Empoli Fiorentina at Sassolo and Bologna at Genoa Lazio at Udine can Udine do it again we gotta see uh, let's also talk Coppa Italia. Uh, here are the results. We had four games and now it's a full round. As I said, Milan played a B squad with many underage players and I was quite annoyed at that. That one has already said in the short video. Uh, but it actually worked out and especially if De Hernandez from the center back position can launch those two assists against Jovic. The first one, a deep ball that, yes, Jovic then uh, controls nicely and the goalie on both goals doesn't look, uh, both uh, the first three goals, to be honest, doesn't look re re really good. But that's already a start and there were multiple chances where maybe Jovic sometimes was too uh, slow, but Adli was also really good, good in midfield. So I actually did enjoy this performance and gave me hope for more. The solo from Theo Nandes, yeah, this reminds me of the best Theo Nandes that we can have. Xhaka Tarare then just at the beginning, and that's one of the young guys uh, gets the 3-0, and at a point that the game kind of fizzles away. Uh, Arzi pulls one back, it was a deflected shot, and then Leao, uh, I mean, Pulisic and Leao came, came on um, both around the same time, 70th and 71st minute. And once Leao came on, I mean, his goal was to take the ball and then run through the entire defense and score. And he hit the miles multiple times, and Pulisic then said the same thing, ah, Leao is not seeing me. I do the same thing. So it was a lot of me, 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 but Leao finally gets his goal on a Pulisic assist. 
all good. I hope Leal will score more then. Atalanta win 3-1 over Sassuolo. That's not a surprise per, per se, but um, as a Milan fan, it's a surprise that De Ketelare scores the first two goals. Miranchuk makes it three because uh, before Beloka can pull one back for Sassuolo. So Atalanta cruising in the next round where, as we will see, they will host Milan. Roma had to struggle and Roma really, really, really uh, boring team at the moment. They found themselves down at home to Cremonese. Jajut. Uh, scoring the goal in the 37th minute and then late on Lukaku as a moon assist and a Dybala penalty see Roma through to the next round where as we'll see Derby della Capitale maybe that will ignite them and then Juventus were down after a minute uh, bad 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 um, uh, e, um, mistake by uh, Gatti uh, Iguimesi makes it nice but the Miretti gets an equalizer, Cambiaso turns around before the half, and then it was all, all you. Remember, it was all you from the moment they went down. Uh, Rugani uh, taps one in. Uh, there was an own goal in India that actually Yildiz, who is another um, a revelation for Juve. Uh, that was his solo, the shot get parried, and Bron uh, puts the parry shot in, into the net. Yildiz then scores a really nice solo goal of the evening. No, that was Timothy Way of making 6-1 with a really brilliant far hour shot that nicely kisses the other side of the uh, bar and goes in. So real fun stuff for Juve and Juve scoring six goals. That is sensational and that shows you that Juve is really starting to feel themselves. As I said, after the weekend's round, we have the cup round and really interesting fixtures. Bologna, Fiorentina, definite. That has Derby up The two towns are just an hour apart on, on the opposing sides of the Apennine Mountains. Then Derby della Capitale had to be played at 6 o'clock, of course. Yes, it would be nice to have this as a 9 o'clock game. But, you know, the fan bases don't like it. So it's a lot of trouble. Better to play it a little bit sooner. And then Atalanta, Milan. Oh, don't like that. I mean, I would have liked home field advantage uh, switch on that one. Atalanta actually were much better than Milan. And while I think that it's time for Milan to finally win the Coppa Italia again, the last time was 2003. It is not a competition that Milan like. And with Inter out, you have a chance. But Atalanta away, it's not easy. Juve though, cruising, frozen on the culture. Uh, just uh, in the semifinals, the win of Bologna Fiorentina will face the win of Atalanta Milan. Lazio Roma will face Juve. So that's it for me from Italy. Let me know what you thought about it. Yes, Juve was fun for once. Juve was fun cruising into the next round. I actually have to say the cup round for Milan was also fun. So there you go. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day, bye!